let's start by creating our transponder device and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one simple modifier and it's a bevel modifier leave it at the defaults although I'm going to change the segment number to something like eight and then what I want to do is I'm going to go to the top view and I want to stretch it but I don't have any tools to stretch it so I'm going to come over here and say I want the object gizmos to be move and scale over here I don't really want the rotate. The rotate gets in the way a lot of times. So I, I, I leave rotate alone. I just use the R key to rotate. But once I have this, I can very easily stretch it to the size that I really want my transponder to be. And if you notice that it's stretching it along these edges. So if we look at the side view, we'll see that our radius isn't perfect. And we kind of want that for this. I'm going to drag it down to something, something like this. Now this is a little too crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up. I'm going to move the scale up just a little bit. And I'm going to move the stretch in just a little bit too. And then I'm going to say object apply scale. And now notice that applied the scale of the object natively and then added the bevel, which now everything is perfect. So now I'm going to go back into my top view and I want to scale this out. So I get that little stretch on this axis right here. And then I'll stretch it down as well. So there we have. So this is our, our little transponder device. And you can see now that we have it correct. Now, one thing we have, we haven't done any smoothing yet. If I look at this view, you'll see that we don't have any smoothing. In fact, let's just go ahead and make the base color something that's a little easier to work with, something like gray. And I'll add a little more roughness to it. Something like seven or something like that. That's better. Okay. So now that we have our object, we want to smooth it. I'm going to right click on it, say shade smooth. And then I need to go over here to this vertex and I'm going to make sure to set the normals to auto smooth at 30. And we might have messed with that a little bit later as we start cutting into things. Let's go ahead and start cutting into this using Kit Ops. So first thing I do is I hit the end key and we're going to go into our cutters medium and we're going to grab this cutout right here. And I'm going to select that. And then with this already selected our object, I'll hit the add insert button and I'll move this over and I'm going to drop it in there and it's huge. It's really hard to tell, but I can hit the escape key and I'll go over here and I'll just say scale. Let's make it, let's make it uh, small and then let's add the insert again. And there you go. Now it's starting to look a little better. So that's, that's a little better. So I'll stick it over here and I'm going to immediately go up here and I'm going to say, because the red is the X axis, I'm going to zero it out on the red. And then if I hit the S key, S is always going to scale for me. So I'm going to scale. And this is going to be our display. I'm going to make it just a little larger. And because KitOps is non-destructive, we can come back and we can mess with all that as we go. In fact, if I want, I can, under KitOps, I can basically hide the cutter and just see what we're working with. That's what this little tool does down here. So it hides the cutter. So I look into this. I'm going to go back into my bevel and notice that the bevel is at the bottom, which is not what I want it to be. So I'm going to go under preferences and under kit ops, there's one thing that you shouldn't have to do, but you're going to have to do here is we just need to turn every one of these little items off. This has to do with kit, working with hops and everything else, but we don't want it to actually move any of these modifiers around. We want to leave the modifiers alone and let them work the magic and let us control how they work. So that's an important concept right there. Now that we have this done, let's go ahead and continue and let's go and look at controls. And we have a number of different controls. Let's take this first one. With this selected, I'm going to hit the add insert and drag it over here. And let's go to item and let's zero it out on the X again. And then let's hit the S button and we'll scale it up. And this particular cutter is interesting because it has an object inside it as well. So we'll go back to Kit Ops. And let's go to this object text and let's add this button panel. And I'm gonna I'm gonna add insert, but notice I didn't select the object first because the insert was selected. But KitOps is smart enough to know that if you select an object and you try and add an insert to an object, it will add the insert to the parent of that insert that's selected. So that's cool. So I'm gonna go here again. I'll zero it out on the X, and this time I'm gonna hit the R button and I'm gonna hit the Z and I'm gonna rotate it and I'll hit 180 and hit Enter, and there we have it. And we have this text called button panel on there. Now, I like, I like the button panel. I don't like the text in the button panel. And I'm, I'm going to try and select the text. And you can see I can't. But if I hit this auto select insert, I can go in here. And I can select the text. And I can X delete it. And I'll go back here. So now I've got that taken care of. 
Lastly, I'm going to add a little kind of a connector thing going on here. And let's see how we do that. I'm going to do that with this cast rib cut right here. I'll do that and I'm going to actually add that to the side here. So with this selected, I'll hit the add insert and I'm going to drop it over right about there. And then I am going to again zero it out in the X. And with that selected, I am going to stretch it out a little bit. So we have a little connector area right there. Now, let's talk about materials for just a second. If I want, I can make this connector metallic. And, and so let's take a look at this. I'm going to go into my view settings for this. So I'll go in here and under the vis viewport display, you notice it says wire, but I'm going to make it solid for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a material for it, a new material, and I'm going to call it aluminum. Let's make it metallic all the way one and let's make the roughness something about there. So there we have like an aluminum material. So now our cutter is aluminum. I'm going to go back into the properties for it and I'm going to go back to wireframe. But I just want you to know that was aluminum. Now this model we have, I'm going to call this plastic. We have a plastic case. Now if I want the aluminum to show up where the cutter is, all I need to do is come up here and say add a material slot and then choose the aluminum. And now we have that set up exactly as we want it. And if I keep it selected, I can come in here and with this, I can move it back and forth. Okay, good. Now this little button up here I've been clicking is the show overlays button. So, okay, next we're going to add a stand for our transponder. So I'll shift A, mesh cube, and I'm going to scale it up a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, once we have that, we'll go back into KitOps and let's look at our cutters simple. I'm going to grab this trench part and with our object selected, I will add our insert, the trench part, and I'm going to stick it up here and I'm going to rotate it about the Z 180 and then I am going to expand it. Okay, have that configured the way we want it. Now let's add another cutter. I'm going to add this CW slope cutter. And we will add that right here. And we're going to need to rotate that about the X. Something like that. 90. And we'll cut our slope like that. So... And lastly, we'll add one more. Let's go to cutters medium and we'll use this one, this advanced cube seven, three, and we're going to apply that here, zero it out on the X. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now that we have this done, let's go ahead and, and look at one other, this SIM cube right here, and I'm going to take it and I will add the insert. And I'm going to add another one. With KitOps Pro, I can basically make duplicates of these and create a lot of different versions. Uh, unfortunately, we're using the free version right now, so we're just going to have to leave it the way it is. So since I don't have KitOps Pro, if I want to duplicate this, what I'll do is I'll turn off Auto Select Insert and I'll come in here and I'll select just that cutter and I'll go into my modifiers and I'll create a array modifier and I'm going to move it. Uh, let's move it this direction right here, something like that. And we can just add a number of them that we want. Let's do maybe four. Okay. And then we'll go back and we'll turn on the auto select insert. So, so now what I want to do is I want to convert this whole bottom unit to a mesh. And the reason for this is because I want to basically copy all of this detail to the other parts of the mesh. And that's really easy to do as I select this and I'll go to the object menu and I'll say apply visual geometry to mesh. And now with this selected, I'm going to hit the numpad forward slash key and we're here. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and say this is an aluminum object. Here we have it. Let's tab into it 
and what I'll do is I'll go to the face mode and I'll select everything and then I'll go to mesh symmetrize one of the nice things about this gizmo is it has the red the blue and the yellow and up here we have red blue and yellow so I know I'm in the x-axis and I know what I want to symmetrize from negative x to positive x so that's what I'm doing right here and you can see I've copied everything on this side over to this side that's worked then I'll hit the a key to select everything and then I'll go back to the mesh and we're going to symmetrize again and this time I want to go from negative Y because I want to copy all of this detail here in this detail I want to go from negative Y to positive Y so I'll go negative Y because to positive Y and then we're done I can tab out of that and now we have our object which looks really good I'll hit the numpad forward slash to go out of local mode and now we have our object turn this on you'll see where we're at looking good Okay, now we want to add a couple switch guards, and what we'll do is we'll go into Objects Tech, and we're going to grab this hook cut right here. And with this selected, I am going to add an insert, something like this, right on the side. And then I'm going to scale and move it around. And that looks pretty good. So with KidOps Pro, we have a button that will mirror this instantly across the parent object. But in this case, since we're using KidOps Free, we're going to have to do it manually. And let's talk about that. So first, what I want to do in this case is I'm going to actually remove all the KidOps props. So now I don't have to worry about auto-selecting insert. And I'll take this, this Boolean right here, and I can actually move it in and out. And you'll see the reason why that is, is if I come over here to our outliner and I hit the period key on my numpad it's going to jump to what's selected which is that hook and if I look in the, inside that I'll see that both of these turns out these are actual curves let's separate these objects from their parent shift select both of them and go under object and I can say parent and say clear parent but when I do that they all they disappear and that's because they're off in some place infinity so I'm going to undo that and I'm going to do the same thing say object parent I'm going to say clear parent and keep the transformation so now we're in the right spot okay now with these selected I'm going to also go say convert to mesh now they're both converted to mesh and now I'm going to select them both and I'll go to object and I'll say join and with them joined I just need to go over here to our modifiers add a mirror modifier and then just select what we want to mirror about and we have them over there while we have them selected let's go ahead and give them the aluminum texture and then with this right here it's really not doing a whole lot I don't think as far as our yeah, maybe maybe it will we'll move it down just a little bit like this and then let's go ahead and mirror that as well so that's our key guard in our stand now the next thing that we want to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start adding materials and decals to this